Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm gonna focus on Nuclear Tech Mod Extended Version 2.0.1, which is the latest version as of right now for this mod. Now, this version adds a lot of performance update, especially when it comes to explosions and RBMK reactors and basically nuclear reactors in general, the fluid system and everything. So, yeah, the timestamps will be given in the description below if you want to skip to a specific section. And without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Gonna start this video with the new nuclear explosions. They are rendered much more faster now and look way cooler than they used to before. So to showcase this, I'm gonna use the N2 charge, the Balefire charge and the nuclear charge. So starting with the N2 charge. Now, would you look at that effect? Uh, not only does the screen shake exactly at the time when the shockwave hits you, but there are condensation clouds and basically the explosion, as you saw, is rendered much faster now. Next up, we have the bell fire charge. And this one is much bigger than the N21. It has a radius of 130 meters and it sets the entire area on Bellfire. So yeah, that's the Bellfire charge, a newly added block. And these two are not exactly radioactive. So they don't really spread radiation. But the third one, which is the nuclear charge, will do that. And along with radiation, there are also interesting effects that come with it. Oh, by the way, the corrupted broadcaster no longer damages you or gives you nausea when you are in creative mode. So that's a great feature. So as I was saying, the nuclear charge or nuclear explosions in general. Now, radioactive blocks have different variants. So basically, they will differ in shades. So as you can see, when basically viewed from below, the explosion not only looks very cool, but it starts raining after some time, and we get a new mob, which is the glowing one, with a 250 HP. I don't exactly know the exact spawning criteria for this one, but yeah, it's a new mob, which spawns due to nuclear explosions. Now, in the nuclear crater, where there is a lot of radiation, you can basically pick up a new fluid, which is the cellulite. And this fluid can then be processed in a refinery, and it will give you liquid nuclear waste, gaseous nuclear waste, and along with this, most importantly, it will give you corium. Now, corium can be once again processed in an ore acidizer with block of fallout, and it will directly give you thermonuclear ashes. So that makes this corium pretty important. Now, we come to turrets. So as you knew, like these were the old turrets, which were also in the 1710 version of the mod. They were retextured by Freon, if I am not wrong. And they can be linked to the manual designator or the turret controller. So they can be fired like this. But now this applies to the bigger turrets as well. So I'm gonna use these bigger turrets, some of these here, to showcase this feature. So now you can manually control all of the bigger turrets, which is a feature which I'm sure many of you want in the 1710 version as well. But the most fun out of all of these turrets with the controller is Jeremy especially with the nuclear rounds so once you connect it it's basically free nuclear fire wherever you want and extended doesn't exactly have the artillery right now so yeah jeremy is the way to go for targeted nuclear strike all right so that was it for the turrets next up we have the pocket radar which actually gives you an warning or basically a warning when a missile is nearby and as of right now it only works on power turrets like i tested it on a normal headpiece but it didn't work but on power armor it did so as you can see or basically as you can hear there's the radar going off and i actually had to exit out of my world and log back in again in order to make it shut down so yeah that's that and the same thing applies to all of the other nuclear missiles as well the explosions which were there in the charges the same applies to missiles but yeah missiles will not launch in a chunk which is not loaded but yeah the screen will shake exactly at the moment when the shockwave hits you which is a very cool detail in my opinion 
So that's it for most of the missiles and bombs turrets part. RBMK performance has been enhanced significantly. So basically how RBMK used to work before was if you had a four high RBMK column like this, a one by one column of RBMK had to be rendered four times in total. But with the new change, what Alcata has done is now a single one by one column is extended to whatever height you set the RBMK column to. So basically no matter how high you make the RBMK, the column will only be rendered a single time. Individual one by one columns won't be rendered basically how high the RBMK is. So that makes making tall RBMK very easier. Like it doesn't take a toll on your FPS. Otherwise, in the normal version, the FPS used to go down significantly. So here I have set the RBMK height to 256. Oh, sorry, 250. But yeah, it goes up there and it doesn't really take a toll on FPS. And uh, yeah, so you can make tall RBMK reactors now without affecting your performance and have fun with it. So that's a pretty significant change in my opinion, the RBMK change. Next up, we have something called the power gauge, which is used to show the amount of power which is passing through a cable or through a connection at any given point. So now you no longer need to basically look at the tooltip inside the storage box as the power gauge will directly show you the amount of power passing every second through the entire connection like this. So that's the power gauge. Now I hope he adds the water gauge soon enough, the fluid gauge I mean. And also with the nuclear reactors, what used to happen was, for example, the big nuclear reactor, it used to lose water even when in a closed loop. Now this no longer happens as it was because of rounding errors. So if I turn off the big nuclear reactor right now, even if there is a closed loop, you can see the water doesn't really fill up completely. But before it used to lose a lot of water. And if I do this process once again, you will see that the water will actually fill up completely. So yeah, it's viable now to make closed loop. Next up, xenon production was buffed up using the lint xenon cycle or the boosted lint xenon cycle. It was buffed up to what, like six times now. So it's much faster than it what it used to be before. And uh, another thing is that the hover pad, it no longer kills you when you land. So before, even if you landed from a small height, it used to kill you, but no longer does that apply. So here you can see me slamming into the ground, but that doesn't kill me. All of the bombs basically and the missiles are now updated to their 1710 variant. So you can see this really high definition texture inside the GUI and also when you are seeing them visually on a screen like this. And these are all of the or some of the new missiles. And finally, conveyor belts and ejectors and inserters were added. Right now the conveyor belts don't really turn. So yeah, the half turn that we have in 1710 that doesn't apply here right now, but maybe that will change in the upcoming update. But yeah, they do work perfectly. So yeah, a lot of things were removed and uh, you can read all about it in the change logs. This is all I had to cover in this video. A lot of performance enhances, so I hope you guys try this mod out. So if you enjoyed this video, please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Peace out, stay safe.